Morning, Doc Robin here with your weekly weather report. It's Monday, September 12th, 2022. And let me just get sorted over here. If you are live in the actualization zone, say hello. Sometimes I can't see who it is. So if you could just put your first name in the comments too, that would be awesome. So I can greet you personally. And if you are watching the recording, either in the actualization zone or in YouTube, say hello as well. I always love to come back in and connect with you afterwards. If you're not a member of the actualization zone yet, head on over to Facebook and type in actualization zone into the search bar and you will find us right away. This is your place to be if you are an intuitive, intelligent leader that may or may not have ADHD, but at any rate, you are setting the, the tone for a great week for yourself and you're really committed to creating a new world for yourself and other people. That's what we are here for. And I'm your host. Hey, MJ, nice to see you. Happy Monday, happy Monday. Um, okay, so here, here's how this works. I have been a clear channel since I was a little kid. And I'm also, I have a PhD in psychology and I've been an executive coach, a keynote speaker, a, a leader since, well, for almost forever at this point, it's been a long, long time. I started my, my coaching practice way back in 2006 and went full time in 2013 after I'd finished my PhD and my postdoc and all of that stuff. So um, the way that this works today, though, is that I always tune into the energies that are available to us this week and longer than this week, obviously, too. But I this isn't predictive. It's not like a horoscope reading or anything like that. I just like to feel into what's going on this week and how we can access the energies and the support that we need in order to be able to create what it is that we want to create in our lives. I often use uh, Oracle cards for that today. I'm pulling from Rebecca Campbell's Work Your Light Oracle deck. You've seen this before. Do you use Oracle cards? I like them. I think it gives a good story to tell around the energies. It just helps kind of anchor in what I'm going to be talking about today. And hello, other Live viewers, I'd love to say hi to you as well. If you're joining us just now, this is your weekly weather report in the actualization zone. So let's go ahead and dive in. And I want to share with you the first thing that, well, the first card that's come up is this one, Imrama, Imrama. And the question is, where are you being called to journey to? And I think that this came up last week as well. So it's interesting that this is kind of an ongoing ongoing conversation that the guides are having with us about where is the journey taking you? Where are you being called to go? Here's something that has come through privately for me that I've been working on in my own life. I want to share it here with you as well, is that imagination, the energy, the spirit, the consciousness of imagination is the new fuel that we are being invited to run our lives with and on. So in the past, we may have run our lives on the energy or fuel of adrenaline, caffeine, sugar, fear. And when we use those, those kinds of fuels to run our lives, you can certainly manifest things in our lives. We all can. We all have manifested things running on those fuels. But the imagination, the fuel of the imagination is so much a more clean, high frequency, pure, energy to run your system on. And so the invitation really today is to wherever you're headed on your journey, to run on the fuel of your imagination. So to unplug from fear, unplug from caffeine, unplug from sugar. And as I said, unplug from caffeine, I kind of mean that literally. But if you've got ADHD, often as I do, I use caffeine to kind of focus my attention. So we have to be paying attention to that as well. Um, at any rate, just unplugging from the frequencies that you know aren't the best frequencies for you. We get into a habit of running on these lower frequency energies and the world around us is really strongly suggesting that those are the frequencies that are available to us to run our lives. And I am here to tell you 
that the fuel of the imagination, the fuel of love, the fuel of joy, these are actually the fuels that are that create the best outcomes, the and better scenarios for us in our lives. So can you just imagine? And when I imagine imagination, I actually see this beautiful stream, this beautiful river of possibilities that I can simply swim in and infuse it in every cell of my body. And Cooper, my, my dog agrees, He's, we've got visitors coming in the courtyard and Cooper's our alert dog. So give us just a second. Okay, there we go. All right, so imagination. Wherever you're headed on your journey, tap into imagination. By the way, imagination is in part a cognitive process. So you are going to engage your intellect in it, in it, but it's really, I want you to tap into the frequency of imagination first. And you can do that simply by envisioning that beautiful river, that beautiful river of imagination that is possible for you to just dive into that I just described. All right, so the next frequency or the next theme that's available this week, the guides are saying, oh, this one. We see this a lot in our, in our community as well. It is the warrior woman. Have you answered your deepest calling? Well, let's go back to imagination. The pathway for answering your deepest calling is to tap into your imagination. Imagination is a fuel even that intuition runs on. Imagination is a fuel that your future has the possibility of running on. So it is really important for you to be able to tap into that field of imagination and use that even as you are answering your deepest calling. I don't believe that we can really truly answer our deepest calling from any other fuel except those that I've been referring to, to today, imagination, love, joy, peace. The more clear and pure the frequency is that we're running on, the easier and more graceful and less hard work and less arduous the journey is. It's not that we won't have problems, of course, but those problems can be viewed through the lens of, through, viewed through the lens of imagination. My goodness, those problems become possibilities. The problems become what ifs. The problems become challenges that create the opportunity for breakthrough solutions. So whatever problem is in front of you, even then you can infuse imagination into it and just wonder what's the best way to resolve this? What's the best way to create something around it? How can this problem become my greatest challenge and how can the greatest challenge be a gift to me? I'm serious. The guides are so cute. They're giving us these cards over and over again. This one I think we had last week too. This is the crumbling. What are you clinging on to? You've heard me say it. There's that meme. I don't know who said it, but he said, everything I've let go of has claw marks on it. Well, how about we don't be like him? How about instead of clinging on to things, why don't we just let them go? Even set them sail in the stream of imagination and see where those things that we've been clinging to can transform just by letting them go. Just by being, being a good steward of anything in your life that you're clinging to. The Buddhists would say, of course, that suffering is caused by clinging. And of course, suffering is caused by holding on, by suffering is caused by clinging. It's also caused by pushing things away that you don't want. So what if you just created a neutral energy around those things? rather than pushing against them or holding them so tightly to you, what if this week you just neutralize that energy? What if you just looked at those things, whether you're pushing them away or clinging to them, what if you just looked at them and said, I wonder, I wonder is a phrase that activates your imagination. What if you just be curious about them? What if you just be open-hearted about those things that you're clinging to? How might that change your relationship to them? How might that allow you to really infuse every aspect of your life with the frequency of imagination? 
Okay, last card of the day. The Council of Light just wants you to remember that they are here for and with you. Everybody has guides. Everybody has access to the frequencies of love, light, and truth. Everyone has access to their Akashic records, their Akashic field, the, the field of infinite possibilities. And when you access those fields, it's important for you to be as clear as possible, which once again, to just go back to this theme of imagination today is an important reason to tap into the field of imagination, to clear out any of those, those lower frequencies. Not, listen, we're never going to, I'm using air quotes here, get rid of fear. I think that fear can be viewed as a challenge or a threat. And what if through the lens of imagination, you just viewed anything that evoked fear as a, as a challenge? out of curiosity. It really asks you to come out of the victim, persecutor, rescuer triangle though, doesn't it? Imagine what life would be if you just extracted yourself from that triangle and viewed those, what you previously would have seen as threats, as challenges. Could be an interesting experiment. All right, so the Council of Light is here. All you have to do is invite them. They are very polite beings. The benevolent ones are never going to push you. They're never gonna press you. They're never gonna tell you what to do. They're going to offer perspective. They're going to offer guidance. They're going to do that on the frequency of good humor, imagination, joy, love, light. All you have to do is ask. And then, when you get information from them, take it in and take action. Be discerning though, be discerning. This is why it's so important to clean up your energy field, to do your energy hygiene every single day so that you have a clear channel for them to communicate with you on. Think about it. If you haven't washed your hands, God forbid, for three days, think about all the, the bacteria, the fomites that would be on your skin. And think about then how those how that those dirty hands could affect everything that you do. Well, so too is the case in some ways with your energy field. We have to normalize, normalize energy hygiene. Take your baths, cut your cords, drink lots of water. Just clear your field so that you get a clear channel, so that the guides can come in and communicate with you on these very clear channels. I think that's one of the greatest gifts of being an intuitive and smart person who happens to have ADHD is that I have this capacity to go into my imagination, to tune into those subtle frequencies, and likely you do too. So it's time to start practicing that. That is your weather report for today. If you found this helpful, do, do me a favor couple things. One, leave a comment and let me know what your number one takeaway is. That's important for me because that, that helps me help you better, but it also gives me a little bit of a re reward. My brain needs the, that dopamine. So if you would do me a solid and give me some feedback on what you loved about this. If you know somebody who could benefit from watching this, please share it with them. This is a grassroots movement. We're starting with us. And we're sharing this information out into the world. So if you'd like to, to do that, that would be awesome as well. And um, that's it. And have a great week. And let me know. Let me know how things go for you. Big love. See you next week.